So thanks again. Um, I'm Levente Juhász, uh, and today I'm with uh, MapTime Miami, uh, where I became a co-organizer, and I'm also doing a PhD at the University of Florida. Uh, and this talk is, is going to be about uh, how we are trying to build uh, a geospatial community in Miami. Uh, so just a quick outline. Uh, we have decided to do a building import uh, in Miami-Dade County, uh, very similar to, to the uh, LA County import and also the New York City imports, but it's on a very different scale because we don't have many mappers in Miami and also we didn't have uh, enough buildings uh, because of the country just uh, don't provide it uh, as open data. Uh, so we have tried different outreach techniques uh, like uh, contacting local mappers, which I thought were local. Uh, also, uh, we did our regular map time meetups and since I'm, I was TAing at the University of Florida, I also introduced uh, this import task uh, as part of uh, coursework. Uh, so yeah, I would like to show you whether it worked or not, basically. Uh, just a few quick words about the import. Uh, I'm not going to be too technical because this is not the purpose of this talk. Uh, we have decided to go with a hybrid approach meaning that we have uh, separated our building data set into two parts. Uh, and one, uh, the major part of the buildings were uploaded automatically with upload scripts, uh, but we also wanted to engage the community. So uh, we have introduced a, a manual uh, task as well, where people would have to uh, review these buildings and decide whether uh, they, they want to upload them or not. Uh, these buildings that needed to be manually reviewed uh, have had some kind of conflict, uh, but nothing major. Uh, on the left side of the figure, you see a self-intersection, which in its current state cannot be uploaded to OpenStreetMap. Uh, sometimes buildings in our import set were overlapping with existing OpenStreetMap buildings, so we also needed some humans to uh, take care of that issue as well. Uh, and also the same with the buildings overlapping with the road network. Uh, we went through the regular channels of, uh, of uh, data import, so we introduced it in the mailing list, uh, then we had uh, some meetups just to let the community know that we are planning to do this. Uh, we have set up our own uh, tasking manager instance, uh, also have the wiki page, uh, and we created a tutorial uh, that's hosted on GitHub. So we believe we had all the resources and we could uh, hand it over to people. Uh, the data volume of this import is uh, almost 100,000 buildings. And after the pre-processing uh, steps, uh, we ended up having 84,000 buildings in the automatic bucket that was uploaded uh, with the upload scripts. Uh, and that left us uh, almost 11,000 uh, buildings uh, for, the, for the actual mappers uh, to review. Uh, this image shows uh, basically the spatial distribution of this import. Uh, this is Miami-Dade County, and with green colors, uh, you can see the buildings in the import data set. With reddish colors, I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, but those were the building, buildings uh, that existed in the OpenStreetMap database at the time of import. Which means that it's, it was a huge addition to the uh, Miami OpenStreetMap data because virtually we had no buildings. Uh, so that's why basically we decided to, to implement this uh, import in the first place. Uh, but it's the current state of uh, the import. Uh, on the tasking manager, currently it shows 20% uh, of the manual review process, but as I've said, uh, 84,000 buildings have already been uploaded. Um, we want to improve this number because this is pretty low, uh, so that's why actually I'm here, because I will need your input. Uh, I will need you to tell me how to engage people. <laughs> so for uh, outreach, we have We've tried several methods. Uh, first, we uh, try to contact active local mappers, you know, uh, open street mappers who have some editing history in, uh, in Miami-Dade County. Then we also uh, organized regular map time meetups. Uh, we announced it uh, on f uh, 
basically all the social media platforms that you can think of. Uh, and the third part of our outreach uh, was the um, student outreach uh, in the, at the University of Florida. Uh, there were two courses, GIS programming and uh, GIS analysis, that I was TAing. Uh, and we, we thought that this import process is kind of related to what we have been doing in, in those classes. So I will just click, quickly go through uh, these different approaches and uh, we'll just uh, present how they worked. So uh, when I say I contacted the top 50 contributors, uh, I'm talking about uh, registered mappers already. I downloaded a chain set uh, dump and I was looking at all the contributions that, uh, was, in, that was found in Miami-Dade County, uh, just aggregated the data uh, and then just got a list of usernames. Uh, it was just an introductory mail in the OpenStreetMap message system, just telling them about the, hey, we are MapTime Miami, we are planning to do this import. I've seen that you're doing some great work in Miami, so like, I would like you to, to help us. Uh, also, you know, I just told everything I could, like we have a GitHub page, a Slack channel, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I also asked them to join our next MapTime meetup. So how did it go? Well, I contacted 50 mappers. Uh, I got response from eight people, which is actually not that bad, uh, but five of them told me that they are not able to help because they are busy, uh, they don't live in Miami actually, they, were, uh, they have been on vacation. Uh, three of them said they might contribute and they liked the idea a lot, uh, and two of them actually uh, kind of contributed, uh, not by adding buildings to the map, but by reviewing the data and providing OpenStreetMap notes uh, if they notice some uh, issues with it. Uh, so it's like regular data cleanup and, and fixes. And actually that was a great help, so I shouldn't have used red color, I guess, uh, because they, they, they helped a lot. But the uh, magnitude of, of uh, this outreach technique is, uh, well, I expected something way better, actually. Uh, it was two out of 50, uh, so I don't know where it went uh, wrong. Uh, oh, and also, like a fun fact, uh, because I, I thought that uh, this list is going to contain local mappers, because you know that's what we, we used to think about OpenStreetMap, that it's, it's relying on local knowledge, but it turns out that out of the 50, 13 people is working for the Mapbox data team. So, uh, for the next uh, iterations, I might need better definitions of local mappers because this uh, method clearly isn't working. <laughs> okay, the second approach is uh, the general map time uh, activity that activities that we have been doing. Um, we have held meetups pretty much every month uh, at the time uh, of the import. Uh, some of them actually was really well attended, uh, some of them not so much. Anyway, we tried our best to reach out to people uh, and then engage them in mapping. Uh, we also introduced everything on our Facebook channel uh, and I also put a link on my OpenStreetMap profile just in case uh, someone clicks on it. Uh, and with this method we have gained uh, 19 mappers, uh, 19 mappers who actually sat down in front of our tasking manager, uh, took the time to read the uh, instructions, actually download our data set, and upload the data back to OpenStreetMap, which is uh, way better than the previous method. Also, I've put there, we have reached um, uh, around 200 users, uh, and by this, I mean that the buildings uh, that are already on OpenStreetMap uh, by either the automatic mean or, or some uh, previous uh, human mapper. You know, these buildings are being uh, further edited, so some people attach more information to them, like names, uh, or maybe they just refine the geometry and stuff like that, which is also a good thing. Okay, and the third approach that uh, we have used uh, is uh, was in the geomatics program of the University of Florida. Uh, GIS programming and GIS analysis uh, classes. 
Uh, in the GIS programming class, we've been teaching uh, ArcGIS to them. So these students are socialized in, in S3 products, uh, which is very different from OpenStreetMap. So we figured that it would be very interesting uh, for them to like, see an open source project. I also talked a lot more about the, the technicalities, like all the tools that, tools that we have developed. Uh, and for the other class GIS analysis, uh, they are going to be GIS professionals, so again, the idea was that they might be interested in uh, learning about new data sources uh, and different ways of doing GIS. Uh, the class format is actually a distance class, because I'm not located in Gainesville, where the main campus of University of Florida is. Uh, I'm down south in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and also a lot of students were scattered around Florida. So some of them were in Miami or Key West. Uh, a lot of them obviously were in Gainesville. Uh, so anyway, it was a distance uh, class, so we've been, uh, we needed to record lectures and stuff. Uh, so the way we implemented it, that we offered this uh, task as an extra credit assignment uh, for 5% of the final grade. Uh, we also handed out uh, the assignment description, obviously, an import tutorial, uh, which is kind of like a step-by-step -step guide, like, hey, go to this website, do this, uh, then download this, uh, edit the buildings like that. So it was very detailed. Uh, and I also did a live demo, like where I actually sat down in front of the computer, showed them everything, uh, just talked about the basics of OpenStreetMap, and also I showed them JOSM. So like, hey, this is how you map in JOSM, which could use some uh, UX love, I would say. Uh, students didn't really like it, to be honest. <laughs> so I needed to uh, do that lecture and actually record it so they could just go back and, and check it one more time. So how was the participation? Uh, I think I forgot to put the number, but we have more than 50 students uh, in these two classes. Uh, and out of the 50 students, 17 decided to hand the assignment in. Uh, two of the assignments were, well, like, it was, I shouldn't say harmful, but it was not a good assignment, so actually I needed to revert uh, a few chain sets. Uh, but the remaining 15 actually were really good. So I, I think I read them 100%. So they were useful, they took the time, uh, they got to know OpenStreetMap, and really that, that's what I wanted. Um, the great, great distribution, because uh, my idea before doing this was like, oh, okay, it's going to be like the students who, who will need the extra 5%, uh, but it turns out that that's not necessarily the case. Um, eight of the assignments uh, are from students who got an A, uh, and only two of them needed the extra 5% to, to, to uh, reach, reach an A grade at, by the end of the semester. Uh, also, two of them, because of the uh, extra credit assignment, achieved more than 100% in the class, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, out of the B students, uh, no one needed the, the extra credit uh, to get a B. Uh, so I guess why they tried is to uh, somehow make their grades uh, up to an A, uh, but they couldn't do it for some reason. Uh, and for the one student who, who received the C, uh, he really needed this extra 5%. Okay, so let's talk about the time frame and the activity, uh, just to see whether we can figure out uh, if any of these methods uh, can increase participation. Uh, oh yeah, I think I forgot to tell you that this import, we started it, I think, last spring, maybe uh, May 2016, I think, yes. So anyway, uh, when I plotted the uh, activity uh, related to this import, uh, I noticed a lot of peaks and then like a lot of areas where there were no activity at all. Uh, and then I was just trying to kind of uh, reverse engineer, you know, try to figure out what happened and that triggered these peaks. And the first two, uh, right after the uh, introduction and then the implementation of the import, the first two peaks uh, were because of MapTime, MapTime Miami uh, meetups. And then there was the uh, due date of the first class, which didn't really do anything. Actually, I only got one student uh, out of that class. Mm, 
so obviously it doesn't show up in, in this plot. Uh, there's something I call random mapping. I will tell you uh, a little bit more about it later. Uh, but actually, it's not related to any of the activities that, that uh, we've been doing. And then the big peak in the middle of the graph uh, is related to the second class, the GIS analysis class, uh, where I have got um, 16 submissions, I think. So that was a lot of uh, addition to, to this import task. Uh, and then again, there was another uh, period with new, no activity. Uh, and then again, this uh, random mapping thing. So by this random mapping, uh, what I mean is that uh, these contributions are from people who I do not know through MapTime Miami, uh, so who I haven't met like in my life. Uh, so most probably they have just figured uh, out about the import through Twitter or uh, they just browsed the OpenStreetMap wiki and that's how they got to know about it uh, and then they decided to contribute, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, just a few points about the lessons that I've learned uh, about this. Uh, I got some really nice comments from students, uh, which was uh, really like, uh, some of them were saying that she didn't know that uh, it was so relaxing to sit down in, in front of a computer and the map to add buildings for a good cause. Uh, but unfortunately, despite all the positive feedbacks that I've gotten from them, no one stayed active. So as of today, uh, they have not done any more mapping in OpenStreetMap, sadly. Uh, also, another thing that I noticed that OpenStreetMap uh, can be very, very confusing for uh, people uh, who don't yet know it uh, and who are socialized in, in different GIS uh, products because Honestly, I had a tasking manager instance, uh, we had a wiki page, uh, we had uh, some tutorial in GitHub, and there was the uh, OpenStreetMap website, and there was the Ugly Josem editor, <laughs> ugly for them, not for me. Uh, so they just got confused, like, oh my god, I'm contributing to OpenStreetMap, but what is OpenStreetMap really? So I think I've lost a lot of students because of this, so for the future I will need to find a way to clarify this and uh, make it uh, more appealing to them. Uh, and in general, it was just way harder than expected to motivate people and, and get them to sit down and, and uh, do some open treatment mapping. Uh, on the bright side, that there were uh, several good examples. Uh, for example, this map. Oh yeah, so I just looked up, looked up all the users in my tasking manager uh, and then I uh, uh, access their chain sets to see the, the spatial pattern. And actually, uh, some of them who got to know OpenStreetMap through this import took the time and effort and, and map in their home regions. Uh, there was a guy from Bangladesh, uh, some people participated in the humanitarian project, uh, and also some of them scrolled back to their hometown and added some buildings, uh, which was pretty good to see. So. I would like to throw an open question at you guys. Uh, so what do you think, what else should I do to try to motivate people in Miami and get more mappers and get the OpenStreetMap thing going a little bit? Uh, so if you have any experience in this, I would really like to get some feedback and advice. Um, if not, then just thanks for listening. Thank you. Questions? Hello. Uh, in probably a few months ago, because of elegant in the elegant in the if you need a lot of money from FEMA to leave the building, would be black, would be black on a lot of time is building on open grid map. The help to come to FEMA, FEMA will leave a lot of building after elegant in the you will be uh, alone to rebuild in uh, Florida after Alican, Ilma, you know, big Alican. Yeah, uh, so the, if the question was that uh, whether we have done something in Florida after Hurricane Irma, uh, we have not actually. Uh, maybe we should have, I, I don't know the reason why we did not. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, we're running a little behind. We don't have any more time for questions, oh. but thank you very much, Vate and Thank find you. him at the break. <laughs> We're gonna break for a few minutes and then come right back. Thanks.